honest, you can. I told you before, we can't get down the Alanga. Spengler did. Well, in a canoe, If the German did it, we can do it, too. I'm not in no How do you know? You never tried well, I never tried shooting myself in the head, neither. <laughs> the trouble with you, miss, is you... You don't know anything about boats. Guys, welcome to a classic film review of The African Queen, 1951's romantic adventure movie that stars Humphrey Bogart and Catherine Hepburn. Now, it was directed by John Huston, and it's the story of Bogart's grizzled riverboat captain who takes Hepburn's well-to-do English missionary on a trip up the treacherous East African Ulanga River. Now, as the First World War has just broken out and she suffered a, a personal tragedy at the hands of the Germans, she must persuade the gin-swigging captain to use his boat to attack a German gunship. Now, Bogey got his only Academy Award for his role here as Captain Charlie Allnutt, and this is my personal favourite Bogart performance, and I'm probably controversially not a huge Catherine Hepburn fan, but I think she's great here as Rosie Sayer. Uh, the pair create a duo that's one of classic cinema's finest. Uh, incidentally, this was the first time either of them had appeared in a movie in colour. Uh, anyway, we'll get to all that. Let's take a look. So the African Queen pairs up Bogart and Hepburn in what's essentially a First World War era romantic comedy uh, set in Africa on a boat uh, with little to no actual war scenes in a movie that acts both as travel brochure for East Africa and a sinister warning of its foreign dangers. The fact that it all works so well to create one of the 50s finest movies is testament to its two leads and its hell-raising director. So it's September 1914 and German Imperial troops arrive to burn down the missionary of the Reverend Samuel Sayer, played here by Robert Morley, uh, in the colony of German Eastern Africa. Rose, go into the house and stay there. What's the meaning of this outrage? How dare you? Well, he's a Deutsch British, can't kind English. Now those pesky Germans beat him up and he soon dies of a fever but luckily for his sister Rosie the local boat courier arrives on the scene to help her bury him and to take her out of this newly occupied territory aboard his vessel, the African Queen. The way I look at it they plan to make soldiers of the natives and take over all Africa. Where's the Reverend? They didn't shoot him Mr Allnut but they may as well have done. Now of course this is initially an odd couple movie with Hepburn's lady of religion horrified with the behaviour of Bogart's captain who, due to a seemingly endless supply of gin, looks as dilapidated as his steamboat and the duo bicker and quarrel as they battle the river, rain and wildlife and eventually the German Kaiser's navy. How's that miss? I've only known such excitement a few times before. A few times in my dear brother's sermons when the spirit was really upon him. You mean you want to go on? you're crazy. I beg your You see, Hepburn's looking for revenge on the Germans for her brother's life, and when she realises there's a load of explosives on the African Queen, she attempts to persuade the captain to use his boat to attack a huge German warship. You're a machinist, aren't you? I mean, wasn't that your position at the mine? Yes, a kind of a fixer, jack of all trades and master of none, like they say. Could you make a torpedo? How's that, miss? Uh, so, just a brief interlude for any modern viewers who... Maybe may think this all sounds a tiny bit familiar. Uh, you may be right because four years after this movie was released, uh, a little company named Disney opened an attraction originally named the Jungle River Cruise, um, later just Jungle Cruise. Uh, and although there was no German warship shenanigans to be found, does share many themes and moments from this film. Uh, and of course, 66 years after the ride opened, we got Disney's Dwayne Johnson blockbuster Jungle Cruise, which does take the German villain aspect of this movie and is essentially a garish CGI saturated mixture of this film and the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> there's no computer generated spectacle here. Early 50s visual effects only extending to some process shots and some actually quite convincing model work as long as you don't look too closely. <laughs> now the film features some stunning camera work with Houston shooting on location in Uganda and the Congo in Africa uh, which gives the whole thing a mostly authentic air with the cast by all accounts suffering greatly for their art uh, with almost all of them enduring sickness throughout the shoot. The only exceptions being Bogart and Houston is they didn't bother with the local water and settled for a diet of whiskey. Uh, a thinly veiled account of the shooting of the movie, incidentally, was the basis for the book and subsequent 1990 Clint Eastwood vehicle, White Hunter Black Heart. So The African Queen is at its heart a road movie, uh, the road here of course being a river, and amongst the romantic misunderstandings and frequent trips down heart racing rapids, you get to play a wildlife bingo with Houston wheeling out just about every example of the indigenous wildlife which highlights the natural beauty of the country, 
even though dark forces are at work there. Uh, and not just of the German variety, as a creepy crawly moment involving being neck deep in leech infested waters testifies to. Ah! Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, that little baggage. Ooh. So yeah, back to those romantic vibes because this is a romance even though there's enough action to keep most viewers entertained. Uh, I love the fact that Hepburn's spinster is initially appalled by Bogart's sweaty, uh, unkempt demeanour and the fact that he guzzles gin like it's going out of fashion. Uh, at one point she ruins his life by pouring his precious beverage overboard. Oh, miss. Oh, have pity, miss. You don't know what you're doing, miss. But she's no damsel in distress here, and she is insistent that they go after the Germans, despite Bogie's reservations. Uh, she also mucks in and gradually becomes as filthy as the captain. Uh, when a broken propeller finally defeats Bogart, it's the prim and proper Rose who comes to the rescue and makes sure the pair team up and pull off a highly technical repair job with minimal equipment. Ah, oh, no. Ain't no use, Rosie. I was forgetting the prop. The blade's gone. We'll have to make a new blade, then. There's lots of iron and stuff that you could use. <laughs> yeah, tie it on. A uh, shout out here to the underwater scenes as I'm pretty sure both actors are doing their own stunts. So the African Queen is of course good old fashioned technical of cinema escapism. Yet another triumph from cinematographer Jack Cardiff. Uh, it's probably my personal favourite film from 1951, a year which also saw Brando in A Streetcar Named Desire, um, The Day the Earth Stood Still, Strangers on a Train and Vincent Minnelli's musical An American in Paris, which scooped many of the year's Oscars. Although they are there and they do exist, the African Queen's uh, political and social themes aren't overly explicit. Uh, they add depth and nuance to the narrative and elevate it beyond just a mere adventure tale. Uh, Houston's direction and the outstanding performances by Bogart and Hepburn bring everything to life. Released a few years after the end of the Second World War and at the dawn of the Cold War, the African Queen has an undercurrent of resistance against oppression and the importance of fighting for your freedoms. And if you can fall in love at the same time, then that's a bonus. Go check it out. I know you don't approve, but it's like a shot of gin. Makes your blood race, your face numb, and your spirit sore. <laughs> I'm sorry I poured that gin out, Charlie. Ah, oh, forget it, Rosie. And just to show you there's no hard feelings, I'll make you another cup of tea. <laughs> 